You know, at 49 years old, I'm really starting to understand that in ministry, how you need people to survive. In life, you need confidants. You need at least one person, maybe three, if you can find them, people that you can be open and transparent with and that you can really, really, really be who you are yeah. and not be judged or condemned or criticized. Amen. Amen. Pastor Champ taught me something that T.D. Jakes taught him. He caught it, and I know I'm glad that he happened to be watching. We tend to watch T.D. Jakes every week. Through the week, and we watch it together on the phone at times. And he said something, my God, that I didn't get to see at that time. But TD Jake said, and Pastor Jim called me and told me about his sister Johnson. And TD Jake said that people will start out at your feet and then end up at your throat. Oh my, God. <laughs> Ooh, my God. I said they will start out at your feet. And end up at your throat. Let's put some scripture on that. Hosanna, Hosanna. And the same people that said Hosanna turned around and said, Crucify, crucify, yeah, that's real. crucify. So when you find a real confidant, when you find someone that loves you and values you for who you are, not for what you do, not for what you drive. None of that stuff. But just value you for you. Yeah. Whether you got much or whether you got less. Whether yeah. you up or whether you down. My God, you need to have people in your life that can handle you. Because yeah. everybody can't handle you. That's why some of the people that you thought, my God, was your ride or dies or your confidants, you look back, they ain't there no more. On, you look around, my God, they didn't already shifted on you, my yeah. God. Because mm, everybody can't handle you. See what I said? You need to understand that. And so when you find those three people, you need those three people to help you survive. Mm -hmm. Jesus spoke to the masses, and he picked 12. One of them was a betrayal. But when he went on to do that, what God has called him to do, he, uh, out of the 12, he ended up, out of the 11, really ended up, my God, with a Peter, James, and John. He had three, yeah. he had three, he had three. Yeah. My God, that was done with him. And even they, fa even they failed him. Mm -hmm. They only went so far with him. And then he said, can you not pray with me for an hour? They couldn't stay awake in this most critical time of his life. He was getting ready to go suffer and be beaten and bruised for them as well as you and I. At his greatest time of need, they failed him. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so what am I saying? There are certain things and some things in life you're going to have to do and you're going to have to go alone. Everybody ain't going to understand why you do some of the things that you have to do as long as it's in God. Some things you're going to have to do alone. Even those that start out at your feet. But end up at your throat. It's a cold-blooded game. But it's all good. Why did the Spirit of God say that? Because some of y'all need to understand that because some of you are very angry and bitter because certain people in your life started out at your feet and now they at your throat. Yeah. They have really hurt you because you gave them you and they couldn't handle you. And so now you bitter, now you frustrated at people that you gave, that you thought valued you, but they couldn't handle you. And so then you got to step back and say, as Paul said, examine yourself. Did God tell you to give them you? So now you upset and bitter at somebody that God never told you to give them you. That's right. Now you got a stronghold of unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment towards people, and God never told you to give yourself to them. Yes. Good. That's why you have to examine yourself, man. Because some of us, my God, got some cold-blooded strongholds in our life, and we and the enemy wants us to keep it about them when the real issue is you. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Yes, sir. That's good. That's good. That's why you need a Peter, James, and John. To tell you that no, sister, no, brother, that one is on you. I know you didn't. Yes, I did. So you're going to be mad? Too bad. 
It's the way it is. And so I said all that to say this, that, my God, when God birthed that in my spirit and dropped it in my spirit about the end and I need you to survive, when he dropped the title, my God, it's so important, especially what's coming up, my God, it's so important because we need each other to survive. And everybody, my God, that you need is not always sitting in a church talking about God, I love you, or Jesus, amen. There is some people, my God, that you need in your life that ain't in here yet, my God, and they coming because of your commitment to Christ. Are you with me so far? And so never, never discredit people. My God, one of my favorite scriptures that Pastor Manny brought back to my attention when I shared, my God, the miracle in his life, I mean in my life, he said, it reminds me, son, of what you've always said ever since I met you almost eight, nine, ten, however long, many years ago. In the Psalms 18, verse 25, I want to say this before I, Dropped, because I only got that much to go to finish this message, but I'm going to finish it. Y'all know I'll be fooled. You know, it don't take too much for me. Come on, somebody. Amen. But I want to speak this into the atmosphere because you all understand this. And if mm, you all understand how important it is to show up when it's cold outside. Yeah. You all understand, my God, how to show up, my God, when it's foggy outside. Yeah. When everybody can come up with an excuse why, why I don't need to go to church, my God. When, when, when you understand that you got to even show up sometime when you don't feel like it, Sister Jackie, when your back is hurt, when your leg is hurt, when your head is hurt. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. When somebody that made you mad, my God, you understand that when you show up, my God, oh, my God, there's a blessing when you show up. Uh, Pastor Jeff always says that, my God, stone number one is to show up, baby. Don't never stop showing up. Don't never stop showing up for God. Quit letting anything cause you to miss the house of the Lord. Quit letting anything interfere with your study time and your devotion time with God. Quit that flesh, my God. My God, keep you from reading, keeping you from showing up. You got to show up at home and you got to show up in the house of the Lord. That's why he said in Hebrews chapter verse, chapter 10, verse 5, or 25, whatever that was, not to forsake yourself of gathering together. Oh, uh, my God, many people that don't stay connected to the vine, they won't last long. They won't last long. People that don't stay properly connected to the vine will not last long. He says, those that endure to the end, the saints shall be saved. Why do you think Christ put all of the scriptures off in there? Why did you think God put those principles off in there? Because he knew that many would start, but they wouldn't finish. He knew that many would start out going hard, but they won't finish going hard. He also understood, my God, if you be faithful, he got to reward you for your faithfulness because he can't go against his constitution. Thank you, Lord. Thank the constitution is the bylaws. This is the bylaws, men of God, to the kingdom. He don't move away from this here. Bylaws govern. <laughs> Everything is contingent on the Constitution. This is the Constitution, baby. This is the bylaws. This is what he operate off of. This is what he go by himself. And so one of my favorite scriptures, Pastor Manny said, when I shared my God the miracle, he said, it reminds me of what you've always said ever since I've met you. And it's on the screen. Thank you, woman of God, for catching me. My God, to the faithful. Now, see, let me break this word down. Faithful don't mean when you get ready to be faithful. Because you choose to read your Bible sometime. Because you choose to pay your tithes when you want to. You choose to forgive when you want to. I'm just going to keep it on the dollar. That ain't what that's talking about. To the faithful, see, that means you are all the way out the way, and he's all the way in the way. Oh, my God, when your will don't matter no more, his will matter. Come on, somebody. What you want really don't matter, my God. Oh, my God, I know you don't want to forgive, but because you're faithful, you got to forgive. Oh, my God, I know you don't want to let go, but because you're faithful, you got to let it go. Oh, my God, I know you don't want to stop choking, but because you're faithful, you got to stop. Come on, somebody. To the faithful, I can sit on that all day long. When you show up when you don't want to show up. When you love, when you don't, yeah, come on. When he or she don't deserve to be loved. When you don't render evil for evil. When you find yourself praying for your enemy. See, that's all faithful. When you find yourself doing what the scripture wants, tell you to do, but your flesh don't want to do it. But you do it anyway, that's faithful. When you honor God, my God, when you fool, my God, when you don't want to honor God, that's being faithful. See, sometimes we read the word, but we don't read the word. Then he says, you, that's talking about God. Show yourself faithful. You show yourself faithful. Go back. You show yourself faithful. To the faithful, God. Take you, my God, and put God there. To the faithful, God shows himself faithful. Yeah. To the blameless, God shows himself blameless. Watch this now. Next one. Oh, my God. To the pure. Uh-oh. Stop right there. To the pure. See, now you got to take off. God know my heart. Ooh, yes, sir. Yeah. 
God going to forgive me, my God, anyway, which is he will, but there's consequences. That's not what that means. That's those, man, that's us, my God, that is allowing God to sanctify our mind. Yes, Lord. That's those, my God, that deal with people from a pure motive, not from an agenda. Yeah, Lord. Oh, my God. See, God judges the motives. He weighs the motives. Motives, oh, my God. And so, my God, to the pure, those right intentions, right motives, that's it. right desires, right hungers, right thirsts. You got to know how to break the word of, down, word of God down and put it in your life. Yeah, yeah. To the pure, God shows himself pure. That means if you're pure, God going to make sure what comes back to you is pure and undefiled. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So if you're being pure and you're kept single women, then God will send you a pure and kept man. If your relationship... If your relationship is pure, my God, then you have to come on, because that what you sow, you shall reap. That's a principle. That's reciprocity. You got, you can't sow it, my God, and not come back to you. But if you sow badness, it's going to come back badness. If you sow bad fruit, it's going to come back bad fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you with me so far? The Bible says he shows himself pure to those who are pure. Intentions and motives. Mm. That's a powerful scripture. That is one of the scriptures that has anchored my life since I gave my life to Christ. I refuse, woman of God, to be a hypocrite. I refuse, Stephanie, not to be found faithful. Because, see, what you have to understand, that scripture is a promise. If you be faithful, he got to be faithful. And I promise you, oh, my God, it didn't have to turn out like this. God is so, so faithful. I need all y'all to understand that. I need everybody over here to understand that God is faithful. You will never reap the benefits of your a pure relationship with God when you have heartily served God. When you serve God with restrictions. When you serve God out of contract and not covenant. When you're picking and choosing when and what you're going to do. Another part of being pure is guarding against distractions. Because distractions will come in, even good distractions. That's such thing as good distractions. And defile you. When you start worshiping it, instead of worshiping the God who created it. When you start worshiping images and idols, now you become defiled. Now your motives have shift, and now you can quote to the pure he shall, but you're not pure. Yeah. That's why you and I have to stay on the altar. Yeah, the altar of repentance. Are y'all with me so far? Mm -hmm. So why did I say all that? Because you need to stay faithful. He said those that endure to the end. Should nothing catch you by surprise? James said, think it not strange. Think it not strange. When fiery trials, fiery darts, fiery trials, darts. It's like arrows with fire. Arrows, the point is like fire, fiery dart. Choo, choo, yeah. choo, choo. When they hit oh you, God. bam, they burn. Choo, choo, yes, choo. Oh, my God. Fiery darts. My God, the tip got fire. Choo, choo, choo. And they constantly coming. That's why you got to have on the armor. Armor of your mind. You got to have on armor. And see what I'm trying to say? When you don't have the armor on, See what I'm trying to say? He's, them darts is looking for any area mm. where they can penetrate. Yes, my God. That's why, my God, Lord, I know I should have messed with that scripture. That's why you and I have to be very careful that when darts, fiery darts come, that you understand the warfare behind the dart. <laughs> because if you sit up here constantly in life, whether you offended at somebody in church, whether you offended somebody on the job, whether you offended at with your significant other, your kid, whatever, don't you know that's a fiery dart that has penetrated some part of our armor. Yeah, that's powerful. And now that fiery dart, if it's unforgiveness and bitterness and offense, is now affecting you and causing you and I to be impure. Yeah, that's it. That's good. It has penetrated the armor. Because those who accept constructive criticism to receive it are prosper. 
I benefit. Yeah. I move to another level. Yeah. I go to the next level thinking. Yeah. When someone approach you to give you some constructive criticism and you reject it, the Bible says you condemn your soul. That means that you condemn your own life. The devil ain't got to do nothing. Your flesh. Because, my God, I told y'all the three points. My God, my God, conscious, my God, deals with the spirit. Reason deal with the mind. Feelings deal with the body. So when you operate and serve God by feelings, you're going to always be offended. Something going to always not going to set right with you. Yes, Somebody going to always make you mad. You ain't going to never want to receive no correction. You ain't going to never want to receive nothing in love. You're going to always exalt yourself in your feelings. Yeah. Notice I said, always exalt yourself in your feelings. You can't tell me nothing. Who is you? Why are you talking to me like that? I can do what I want to do. I know the Bible better than you do. See, that's flesh. Yeah. Yeah. That's not pure. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely not being faithful. Because in those three people, I, my God, there's also three people, my God, those three people is able to help you. Mm -hmm. All of us got blind spots. All of us got something, my God, in our lives, Sister Jackie, that somebody see that we don't see. Yeah. Yeah. And so God loves you enough because he values you and he died for you and I that when he was sent somebody, it only had to be one of the three. It could be somebody, my God, that's sitting way over there that you ain't never spoke to you, but they see something that ain't nobody else seen. Because sometimes in order to see different, you got to shift and reposition yourself. Because when you got people up too close to you, they can't see stuff. So when you shift, now I can see something. That's why sometimes, if you ever notice, oh, I shouldn't tell you, but you ever notice when pastor comes stand over here? That's because that's cause that's cause I'm paying attention to the people. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? And so sometimes God would have somebody watching you way over there and you don't even know it. Also, too, when we break out and go into the fellowship hall, my God, after you didn't worship and after you didn't pray and after you didn't went hard off in here, now that same, per that same person is now sitting out there in the lobby watching you talk now. Yeah. Did your conversation shift that fast from in here to out there? Yeah. Was it God this and God that? Then you're criticizing and condemning and talking about the truth. That's not being faithful yeah. nor being pure. Yeah. See, it's just that easy. That's why I am terrified and scared of a man or a woman that I never see worship and never see come to the altar. It's terrifying. Then we justify and say, I can do that in my church. Yes, you can. But sooner or later, there's something in life, Sister Tiffany, that will make us get up and get to the altar. My God, there's some mistakes, there's some sins, there's some thoughts, there's some whatever that'll make you say, you know what? Like, thank you, I just looked at Patrice, that'll make you in April come all the way down them stairs doing altar calls. Say, I don't care about no camera, I don't care about no signs, on no, on no, on no, on no screen, I don't care about nothing. Here I come. Because sometimes you got to bring people to the Lord. <laughs> but that ain't what we're supposed to be talking about tonight. But it's preparation. So go ahead and put on the screen the scripture, familiar scripture, and I'm going to jump right to it. We're going to finish out tonight. I ain't got that much. I'm like, God. Somebody let's give God a hand right quick. Thank you. You must understand that your pastor is a builder of people. What Pastor Tedrick at? He's outside. He was talking to me about a situation, and I just started giving him principles. And he said, boy, Pastor, you could just start discipling off of anything. I said, tell him this. Do this. Tell the young man this. Man, pull him to the side and begin to disciple. Let him know. Don't become like the people that you see. And Tedrick caught it. He said, man, Pastor. He said, you always disciple. I said, yes, sir. Pull the young man. Don't let him get contaminated by what's going on around him. Snatch him up out of there, my God, before he loses his job. He said, I received that and went right in there and did what he's supposed to do. It's always opportunities to help people. Builder of people. Yeah. All of us should be builders of people. That's right. And when you're building people's lives, sometimes it's painful. Because everybody don't want to change. Everybody don't want to be built. Everybody don't want to be loved or corrected. Because in the midst of being loved, there's correction. Correction, don't get it twisted. Correction always connect to love. Don't tell me you love me and you never correct me when I'm out of order. See, we want, we want the love part. We don't want the correction part. All you got to do is spend time with him. And you can stand up before the people and flow just like this. 
That's all. It don't be me, be the God. I give God a glow. How so? <laughs> Faithful. Take a lesson from the ants. Letitia, is that the, is that the, the book that you, the scripture that you uh, gave me on Facebook? Is it in that? Is that the book? No, it's in the message. The message Bible? Okay. No, no, you're good. She sent me something on Facebook, this same chapter in the message Bible, and I love how it reads, but it's powerful. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though you have no prince, though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work. See, many of us has read this for three weeks in a row. What type of revelation have you got from it? <laughs> See what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I've been reading the scripture for three weeks in a row. What type of revelation for your personal life do you got or have you got from this right here? It says they labor hard all summer. What you going to do this summer? You going to party and are you going to prepare? Dr. Miles said, while you sleeping, I'm studying. Right. Says, gather food for the winter because they understand that they're small and uh, they can't survive in that cold, so they got to take care of business in the summer so they can chill in the winter. You know what I mean? You got to recognize there's a summer, winter, or fall, summer, winter, or spring in your life. This cause it may be winter time in the natural don't mean it's winter time in your life. Because some of you could be, I don't know about y'all, but blessings raining in, in, in the winter time. Yeah, yeah. But this cause it's winter in the natural don't mean it's winter in your life. But you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? I'm tired. I know I need to be reading, but I'm tired. I worked all day. Sunday is my only day off. I don't want to go to no class. Lazy, but defeated, because we're lazy. When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. Lord, thank you for the few minutes. Bless the people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because we're lazy, because we're mismanaging our time, our resources, it leads to lack in our life. If we don't guard against lust, pride, come on somebody, and the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, and what's the other one? Lust of the eyes, pride of life, lust of the flesh. Is it possible that you're eating up your blessings? Think about what I just said. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Don't you know you can eat up your blessings? <laughs> Don't you know that you can eat up your blessings? You know how many people make sure they keep enough money to eat up all week and don't give God what belongs to him? Eating up their blessings. I got to make sure I got a of money every day so I can't afford to pay my time. I got to make sure I get my hair done. I got to make sure I got an outfit, lust of the flesh. And then you put that off of the pride because I got to look good because I don't value. My value comes from the things I wear, the things I drive, instead of my value, true value coming from God. If you need things and people to make you feel good, you're in trouble. If you got to make sure that if you, you got to make sure that your hair is done every week at all costs to feel good about yourself, you're in trouble. You're really defeated. If you got to make sure, men, that you're doing whatever it is that we do, my God, me, shoes, and all the stuff to feel good, then we defeat it. Your value is in God. Somebody need to write that down. Because many of us, my God, our value has come. And so, therefore, many of us have been told we was nobody. We growed up, my God, in poverty. Our environment was, 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 was one of uh, uh, mediocrity and, and scarcity and uh, defeat and whatever else, abuse and addiction and all that. So, therefore, we have no value. We feel like. But your value don't come from your environment. Your value comes from your relationship with Christ. You need to understand that. Yeah. That's why I say we are all a mess on our way to progress. Your value don't come from what you drive and what you were. If you need somebody to constantly pat you on the back and affirm you, for you to feel good about yourself, if you need a man all the time to feel good about yourself, right, if you got to have a woman all the time to feel good, you're in trouble. 
If you got to go out and buy at least something every week, some of us, our value is in shopping. We don't feel good unless we go spend up some money that we don't got. That's just being honest. I'm just breaking down the scripture. So you need somebody in your life to tell you, now hold up, Francesca, you, now girl, you don't, you know, mm. Naila, no, no, no. Brother Boyd, no, 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 no. Remember, correction is connected to love. If you love me, tell me. But some of us are around people and talking to people and really spend a lot of time with people that we don't even feel comfortable telling them when we need to correct them because we already know what type of attitude he or she going to have. My God. That is a form of bondage. If you spend that much time on the phone and over somebody's house or at the mall shopping somebody, but when you need to correct her or him and you feel like you can't because you know how they're going to act, you are in prison. <laughs> Good, sound teaching that builds a life. And so in the story, in the scripture, we're dealing with the little ant. I'm going to jump right on over to, is it C? Yeah, the ant's work is persistent. Go to C. The ants are very persistent. That goes right on in line with what I was talking about. God shows himself faithful to those who are faithful. You got to be persistent. It's persistent with reading your word. Persistent with praying. Even asking yourself, asking yourself, I'm putting fasting uh, I haven't stopped. I was looking at my clothes. I said, man, my wife said, no, nah, don't you go out and start buying no clothes. You know, I, I'm a 38, but I feel like I'm down to a 36. I'm looking, I, I looked in the mirror. I got, I'm sagging. I got my belt all the way to the last one. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I need a reason to go shop. <laughs> oh, my God, but it's all good. Come on, somebody. And so the ant work is persistent. Write this down up on the, write this down up on the, uh, number C. Uh, it's impossible to stop when food is around. Watch this. Just spill a little sugar on the countertop and leave it there. When one ant finds it, he will return to the colony and bring hundreds with him. And when they come, and my God, when they come to a river, the entire, this is come out of my study, when they come to a river, the entire colony rolls itself into a giant ball church and floats over the other side. They let nothing stand in their way. And so here it is, they come into a river. And so watch this, they come together. They may be moving, my God, uh, 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 in singular form, my God, but when they get to the river, when they get to an obstacle, when they get to a situation, when they got to cross the Red Sea, Come on, somebody, whatever you want to put on it, they, they, they come together. They come together. Don't miss the revelation of what I'm saying. They come together. Even when they're looking at an obstacle, even when they're facing the obstacles, my God, instead of them dispersing, my God, instead of them bickering and complaining, my God, talking about you going, I'm not going, I ain't going, you going, whatever we do, my God, they come together to defeat the obstacle. See what I'm trying to say? When you're going through stuff, it's not a time to disconnect. You come together. Don't miss the revelation. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I told y'all, y'all heard me say this. When the enemy strike, you got to strike back, man. Yeah. Why do we get, when the enemy strike, first thing we do, we don't want to come to church. We don't want to read our Bible. We don't want to be around nobody. We don't want to answer the phone. We don't want to talk to our Peter, James, and John, my God. See, that's not the mindset of an act. Mm -hmm. So when they face opposition, they come together. Why is it that we in the Bible who God gave us instruction on how to defeat the enemy and how to stay together? Come on, somebody. And yet we do opposite of what the word of God tells us to do. And then we wonder why we, we're not victorious in our life because we're not faithful to what the scripture tells us to do. That's right, Pastor. When we go through trials, we disconnect. When we face an obstacle, we won't reach out and say, hey, look, I stumbled. Hey, I'm facing this obstacle. Can you help me? Come on. Can you help me? See, we don't think like that. Yeah. We feel like I got this. Cursed is the man, the Constitution say. My God, Sister Johnson, that trust and lean on the arm of flesh. Mm. Cursed. You curse your own life. Because guess what? When you try to, that's what that means. When you try to do it your way and it don't turn out that way, the way you want to go, you didn't waste the time, resources, and money. Yeah. Cursed is the man who trusted I lean. Look at me lean, y'all. How you going to lean on your own arm? You can only hold yourself so far. You can only hold yourself up so far. When you stop leaning, you need to lean on God. Sometimes God got to kick the walking stick from up on you so you can lean on him. Yeah. Sometimes God got to take with you your crutch, my God, so you can learn how to let him be your crutch. Yeah. Yeah. But see, when the ants come to the river, my God, they, come, they form a ball. They come together. 
that come together. I wish I had time, my God. I would have us come together. I would have about 10, 11 people come together. My God, we could be scattered all over this sanctuary. 10 people, I can have 10 men scattered all over the sanctuary. But now here we are, we finna come to this water. And every day come from everywhere and we just form one ball. Get that image. Every, people everywhere, but they come together and they form one ball. And then they get in the water and the water carries them right on over. Don't let obstacles, don't let nothing cause you to disconnect, disassociate with your brothers and your sisters. See what I'm trying to say? The ant colony, they come together. So guess what? That's in the ant colony. In the church, don't let nothing come between you and your brothers and sisters. Don't let obstacles, misunderstandings, you know what I'm trying to say, frustration. We're going to have that. We're human. But you don't let that cause you to the point where you disconnect. And now you don't, I mean, now you got to sit way over there and, and Tanya's sitting way over there and Shay's sitting way back there. You think people in the body don't see that? Yeah. Why is Tanya over there and Shay back there and Jackie sitting there? They used to all be on the front row. What happened? People vote by two ways. They're giving in their attendance. Write that down. Two ways. You can always tell when people are with you by the time they want to spend with you. When all of a sudden they don't spend no time with you no more, they already voted on you. They just shifted on you. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. So the ants come together. They are very persistent. Persistent. They don't let nothing stand in their way. What's standing in your way that you have the power and authority? Let me go on, get, get, get going. That you have the power and authority to overcome, but you're not overcoming because you, you're fighting with the flesh and not in the spirit. There are certain things that you cannot defeat nor overcome in your life by the flesh. Your own and my own human strength can't do it. Many of us tried to change and we couldn't. I tried to get clean and sober, but I couldn't. There are certain battles, what I'm trying to teach y'all, that you cannot overcome. There are certain victories that you will not ever again get if you don't get it through God. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. And so are you wasting time, but you're talking about you waiting on God? Have you been praying, talking about God when? God said, I've been in answer to that prayer. You just have not executed Matter of fact, you was reading the word, and I showed you. You'd be like, oh, that applied to my situation. And you got the, your revelation, but you didn't execute. Yeah. See, it's one thing to get a word. It's another thing, Tiffany, to execute. Yeah. We good at receiving, but we ain't good at executing. Yeah. Ooh, my God. When you begin to execute, you'll be able to go over there. And my God, like I just told you, I'd be found faithful. Mm -hmm. the execution has to do with being faithful. You got to be persistent. You can't let nothing stop you. Just like when you get a ball on top of the hill, a snowball, and you roll it down, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's persistent. The more it keeps rolling, the stronger it gets. Come on, somebody. The more you keep showing up, the stronger you get. The more you keep reading, the stronger you get. The more you keep praying, the stronger you get. Then you become, as the old saints say in the Baptist church, I become a bomb from Gilead. Come on, somebody. Ooh, I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. I'm trying to teach it. But the more you keep showing up, the more you be found faithful, my God, the stronger you're going to get. I promise you. But when you show up, you got to activate. Please, because I'm looking at some of you now. Your brains are scattered. I feel you, and I'm watching you. Everything got you distracted. You're here because you're clearing your conscience, and you don't want pastor to say nothing, but you're not here. That's right. So what did I just do? I struck your conscience. Bring it on in because I'm yeah. watching you. That's it. Not to criticize you, to help you. Yeah. Amen. Where your mind at? Where your focus at? Don't say you got a laser focus and you ain't read your Bible in four days because you ain't got a laser focus. You got distractions. And you can quote the scripture, I'm faithful, but you're not. Don't lie to yourself, church. Be honest with yourself. If you don't be honest with nobody, be honest with yourself. This is good Bible study teaching right here. This will separate sheep from goats in the body of Christ. I promise you. So when you face opposition, come together. Of course, me and y'all know we watched the movie Zorro when they uh, was it Zorro. Now the gladiators when they came out of the thing, they came. Uh, he said, "As one, Ooh. everybody, my God, that came as one survived. Everyone that stepped out got killed in the movie Gladiator that we show in the men's encounters. As one, somebody ought to write that down. As one. So when we having trials and tribulations in relationships with with husband and wife, we got to remind ourselves as one." Oh, my God, I'm going to have to use that. Write that down for me now. As one. 
As one. That's powerful right there, as one. Because in the movie, for, especially for my men that stayed, my God, everybody, the brother boy that stayed together, they live. Everybody that disconnected woman of God died as one. This body got to stay as one. Yeah. Don't worry about who ain't around. I promise you. You got to make sure that you get ready. And you got to make sure that your heart is right. You got to make sure you're ready to stand before God. Better quit worrying about anybody else. And that don't mean that you're not that you don't that you're not you're not, not honoring the title of the sermon. I need you to buy. But at the end of the day, if you are so focused on everybody else, yes. my God, if you're not focused on your life, you're in Come trouble. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's that's called being out of balance. And so, my God, when they come to the water, my God, they don't let nothing stop them. Write this down up under there too. Number two, they keep going in times of danger. Ants keep going in time of danger. You crush one, a thousand more come back. Can, 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 can you face opposition? You know, I was thinking this today while I was consecrating at home. I was thinking about some of the things that I've been through in my life. As I was studying, I was just, just reflecting. I've been through a whole lot. Before I got saved and then even since I got saved, even since I birthed the ministry, I could have tapped out a long time ago. But because I told myself, that I'm going on. And I didn't quit on the devil, so I can't quit on God. And so I keep reminding myself, I keep getting up, I keep showing up. And then here's the thing that helped me. This is me, Jackie, dealing with me. You know, I talk to myself and I answer and I laugh and I do it. I don't care what you say. I do the whole night. See what I'm trying to say? But I told myself, you, I, I had to own. This is me today. This is me doing a self evaluation. I, I had to even own some of the pain, yeah. some of the mistakes that I caused, mm -hmm. even as a pastor. You have to own that. You got to own that. You can't let danger stop you. You can't let situations stop you. Own what you're supposed to own and repent for what you need to repent for and get up and keep going. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on, somebody. So the ants, the ants, the ants. Let me give you this. The average Christian says we can't. We can't. The average Christian, Brandon, say we can't. That attitude cost Israel 40 years in the wilderness. 40 years in the wilderness. Attitude. I taught y'all about attitude. attitude. Attitude is altitude. You know what I'm trying to say? Don't you know you can have sheep clothes like our teachers and have, on, have a goat attitude? Yeah. I'm not calling you goats. I'm talking about the attitude. The actions of fruit can be goats. So that attitude talking about what you can't do. Cost Israel 40 years in the wilderness. Is your attitude telling you what you can't do? Are you letting your environment Tell you what you can't do? Are you letting words that were spoken to your life, oh my God, in your childhood, my God, control your future? Are you letting, my God, what you can't do in your mindset? Is your mind, have you not allowed God, for those that have been through the vision, and also those that have been reading about, have you not allowed the word of God to recondition your mind? Are you still telling yourself what you can't do? Even though God's saying you can do it? Whose report are you going to believe? Man's report or your report, church? That's Bible. And so we live in defeated, frustrated lives. That's why many are getting picked off. They're coming and going, coming and going. My God, because they live in defeated lives. You know why? Because they're not adhering to the Constitution. Mm -hmm. We quote it, but we do not activate it. Yeah. Right. I implement it. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So that attitude, what I can't do. Quit telling yourself you can't build your business. Quit telling yourself you ain't going to never have a, a good life. Quit telling yourself that your kids ain't going to never be nothing. Quit telling yourself that this is my plot in life and it ain't going to never get no better. Yeah. Quit talking to yourself like that. You're cursing your own life. Yeah. And then I got to come on here and preach like I tell you, I'm mad, man, to try to build you up and you speaking death into your own life. And you wonder why it's grievous. I can't, I can't. You can stay clean and sober. You can have a victorious life. You can overcome that stuff. Oh, my God. You can have a good marriage. You can, Jamie, I'll redeem yourself, my God, and get married to your dad, peace, and have your kids and be a good provider for your life. Come on. I remember he got his job, my God, after that, he thought he wasn't, gonna, he wasn't qualified for the job that he got. He almost didn't even apply for it. He said, I can't do this job. I don't, eh, whatever he said. I remember he told me, and now he got the very thing he said he did, couldn't do, he got. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Yes, Lord. Let me ask you this. Ask you, write this down because I want you to write this down. What has cost you? That attitude, what has it cost you?
telling yourself you can't, what does it cost you? Some of your ministries is waiting to come forth, but you keep telling yourself you can't. I told my daughter I'm finna get her ready to start transitioning the service and stuff. Amen. <laughs> she said, y'all the daughters. Because <laughs> I know she can. But ask yourself, talking about what you can't do, ask yourself, whatever it costs you. Whatever it costs you, Stacy. It has. What does it cost you, my brother? I thank you for coming back. You was at the men's meeting. What does it cost? What does it cost? What does it cost you, Andre? Hmm. Ronnie, for many years, alcoholism told you, said you couldn't, but you did. look at you today. Amen. 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 See what I'm trying to say? Brandon, what? At what? My penitentiary number 178, 179. It ain't cost me nothing. I'm living a good life. It's good on this side. So are we telling ourselves, my God, that I can't because I got a number? But that's not your story, because you in welding school and you got a job. Let's give God a hand. <laughs> but if you would have came on talking about you can't, my record, my charge, it came up, so he hit his pastor. So I got at it. I do what I do. I'm a builder. And so we, cook, we took authority over that real quick. Did we not? I said, no, I'm not trying to hear none of that. But if I'd have been one of the most scary, weak pastors, you know what I'm trying to say? No, 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 no. I'll be instantly begin to build the man of God's confidence and self-esteem up instantly. My God, when he got discouraged, my God, because somebody, T, had a job, but they brought up his record and they didn't hire him. Oh, but I built him up, and two, three weeks later, he got a job. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, because, because his pastor don't have I can't attitude, I just gave him who I am. You can Don't let that I can't cost you 40 more years of pain and suffering. My God, has it cost you, write this down, greatness? Has it cost you I can't greatness? Because you're great. Because you're creating his image. You got ministries in you. God created you with a purpose. Some of you, my God, is getting ready to, my God, see some things and, and you, finna, you finna explode. You finna get that shot like a junkie, I promise you. Amen. You finna stumble up on some stuff, my God, you ain't know what's done. God finna shift you and place you and get you connected properly, right? Oh, my God. And you're gonna see, my God, you're gonna begin to live. Some of you's on the oxygen machine, but you're getting ready to come up off of it. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Because you don't get to stay on the oxygen machine uh, with me, baby, because I'm a liver, my God, and a, a builder of people. Some of you going to come up off that oxygen, baby, and you're going to learn how to live. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's okay to depend on your sister and brothers and live through them for a season, uh, but that's not the vision, as Janice would say. You got to stand up on your own two feet, baby, and walk, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to step and walk, baby. Yeah, I know we need each other to survive, but I don't need you to breathe. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Mm. <laughs> How about seeds? Have, 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 I can't attitude. Have it cost you seeds of increase? I can't. Have it cost you seeds of increase? Have it cost you seeds? Uh, ah, she came la 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 boy. Come forth. Have it cost you? I can't. Seeds of increase. I can't honor God. So now I'm not increasing. Mm -hmm. That's financially, but I'm not even increasing. Come on, Peter. Growing in the grace of God. Because you're not studying, my God. So therefore, you're not growing gracefully in the things of God. Our love walk needs to grow. Our patience needs to grow. Come on. Our long suffering and stuff like that need to grow. See, that's increase. Mm -hmm. Increase. Increase ain't always finances, y'all. That's right. Stuff that used to set you off don't set you off no more. It's increase. People that used to get on your main, uh, your nerves, your main don't get on your nerves no more because you need clip, clip, clip. So some of you, some of the people that you got, if you hold on to them, they're going to cost you seeds of increase. Sometimes you got to be willing to let go so you can increase. Mm, mm, mm. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Have it cost you abundance. 
This is dealing with the fruit now of increase financially. Seeds of greatness, seeds of increase, that means developing. Even in your mind, let this mind. So you got to increase the mind of God. You only get that through reading and praying and spending time with him. You, you, hey, you ooh, thank you, I'm back on increase. My God, how about the wounds that's in our emotions? See, see, when it don't hurt, it's bad. You increasing. Yeah. Uh, when certain stuff don't rock you, you increasing. Yeah. When you hear stuff because they laughing at you and talking about you, and, and that, when it don't bother you no more, you are increasing. Yeah. When you can walk, ladies, and you can walk men, and you don't care if they point at you when you walk by, you don't care if people try to bring up your past no more, yeah. you are increasing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you, you see what yeah. I'm trying to say? And then you got to look at the abundance. Abundance. I'm talking about a good life. I'm oh my God, I can't do it, God. I'm talking about Jack here. Abundance. My, I can't caution you abundance. Wealth. Favor. Access. Keys to the kingdom. Leads to greatness, increase, and access. I mean abundance. See what I'm trying to say? I can't. Keeps you in addictions. Yeah. Not just drug and alcohol addictions. Yeah. Low self-esteem. No self-value. No self-worth. I put on Facebook, my God, God gave me a revelation. Quit trying to increase your net worth. Increase your self-worth. Because, yeah. 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 see, my God, because, see, when you feel good about yourself, you want to do better. Yeah. You just won't settle for anything. You just ain't gonna let anybody do anything. I just, boy, y'all better ask. I'm on this one like, no, 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 no. no. Your self worth. Yeah. I didn't value myself one point. That's why I treated myself the way I did because I didn't know no different. But when I came to the uh, the saving grace and saving knowledge, of my Lord and Savior, Jamie, y'all, now I know better, so I got to do better. Right. See what I'm trying to say? But you got people that know better and still won't do better yeah. Yeah. because they're not activating, they're not implementing, my God, what they're learning. Knowledge don't do you no good if you don't use it. It puffers up. And you quote scripture, but your life don't match nothing you quote. Self-worth. Self-worth. Quit letting people tell you, my God, because you feel good about yourself. That that's pride. The devil is a lie. That is a lie. And I'm on record. That is a lie because you feel good about yourself. Now, when you always make it about you, that's when it's pride. That's when it's contaminated. But if you feel good and you give God to go in like this pastor do, then that's the right self-worth. Because yeah. 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 who wants to follow somebody, my God, that's defeated? Yeah. Who wants to follow somebody who ain't got no testimony? Yeah. 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 Tell me, my God, what God done for you, and I might submit to you. Yeah. But if you don't open up your mouth, my God, I ain't going to follow you because I won't know what you got That's and what you've been through. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. Like I told you, uh, Felicia, my God, it's a testimony, everything. You're going to look back and you're going to laugh like me and Tiki do when I was going through all that mess. We laugh at it now. She's like, baby, remember you did that? Baby, you did that? <laughs> yeah, I do. And she laughed, but I'm hurting. <laughs> Seriously, self-worth. Feel good about yourself. We're not our mistakes, mama. We're not our past. Are you listening to me? Everything you're going through, you still keep self-worth, uh, daughter. You still, you still keep going to the gym. She be on that treadmill. I be on lifting the weight, be in the gym. You keep feeling good about yourself. You keep walking like the queen that you is, woman of God. God been too good to you. But make sure you keep standing, woman of God, even though people talking about, y'all ain't serious. You ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. Man, hey, do that to your pastor. Girl, keep pushing. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Brother, boy, they need you to survive, man of God. You stay on them. You keep walking. Amen. Trying to build the church. Yeah. Trying to build the church. I ain't trying to preach you in the most. I'm trying to build you. Yeah. Want your life right. My God, I'm studying. My God, on Happy Call, a pastor, my God, on a pastor's heart, my God. And he talked about don't, don't let your church become a pop culture church. Where, where the church is be, uh, uh, everything in the pop culture in the world, my God, the church is trying to look like and implement everything the world got going on. That's a pop culture church. And you got thousands of them. Pop culture. The Bible says be instant in season and out of season. That means preach truth in season and out of season. Whether it's popular or not to the people, we preach truth. That's what it means by being ready in season and out of season. That means constantly preach the truth no matter what. I said, thank you, Jesus, because I've been crucified because I stand for the truth. Thank you, Lord. Be instant in season and out of season. 
preach the truth. And then it says people, my God, will, will not want sound doctrine. They, they, they'll move over to fibles or feebles, however you pronounce, uh, uh, pronounce that word. That means they, they will go to places and they'll go to people and they go to churches, my God, where they're not preaching sound doctrine. They, they go because it's too convicting to, to sit up under sound doctrine. So they move, the Bible says, and go to Fibles and feebles, however word you say it, how you ever want to say it. That's 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 word, that's people that's, people that's preaching uh, uh, stuff that's not Bible. Yeah. That's what that means. And all you're getting get understanding. I've had many of them leave here and go to places, and I'm not saying going for Christ is the only place that preach truth. But sometimes you can shipwreck. Sometimes you can move out of feelings and reason because the conviction is too strong. Yeah. Never run from conviction. Conviction to a real Christian, y'all listen to me, man. Conviction to a real Christian, after that, is one of the best tools that God would ever use to mold Amen. you and develop you Amen. in the things of God. Never run from conviction. Never run. Because when you can go somewhere and you never feel convicted, you'll think nothing never wrong. Yeah. And you get to the end of your life and he say, depart from me. Mm. You never became intimate. Wow. I never knew you. He says, dangerous. And he says, many, 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 many. That's why the Bible says many are called, but few is chosen. That's Bible right there. That's not taking the scripture out of context. Stay in season. Preach the truth. And whether they like it or not, Tiffany, preach the truth. Stand. Stand on the truth. Biblical sound truth. But make sure what we are preaching is truth. Make sure the advice and the counsel you're giving somebody is truth. The Bible says let I and you, me and you be alive, but let God's truth be the truth. Let every man be alive and let God's truth be the truth. As long as you're teaching and preaching and encouraging through truth, but truth will bring persecution. Yeah. Yeah. People are not going to like you when you're standing on truth. Yeah. They're not. It's a good word. It's a good word. <laughs> we, we, we must change. I can't till I can do all things through Christ. Familiar scripture. If you feel like you can do all things through Christ, then... Somebody tell me why we're not doing it. Ask yourself, why am I not? Lord, help me. Thank you, Lord. Lord, help me to love. Help me to forgive. Help me to be long-suffering. See, there are principles that we all need to grow in the knowledge of God. I can. It's not that I can. I can. You can, church. You are able. Greater is he. If God is inside of you, greater don't you know if God, if God lives on the inside of you, don't you know the whole kingdom is on the inside of you? But you got to act, get the right key to unlock the thing that you need. The kingdom is within, woman of God. So when you say, God, I need the right key so I can unlock greatness, increase, abundance, peace, healing. These are keys, access. Keys also give you authority. I'm about to teach y'all all that. Keys give you authority. Keys. So when you walk into the White House and you got keys to all the doors, that whoever is following you, they know you got some level of authority for you to have keys in the White House. See what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Also, keys give you access. Are we accessing the wrong doors with the wrong keys? Everything you need is, on, is within. So you got to say, God, give me the right key for what I need. And when you read the word, he's going to show you the key. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you spend time with him and you be faithful, you keep a pure heart, keep your conscience clean. My God, keep your feelings crucified and keep your mind on the altar and let the spirit of God speak to your conscience. God is going to reveal and show you the key that you need uh -huh. to access whatever you need in the kingdom. There's greatness in the kingdom. There's abundance in the kingdom. There's increase. Those three points right there, man, I would work that all day long for six months in a row. Come on. Greatness. There's greatness in you. Increase. Oh, my God, Madeline. Increase. Abundance. Mm. <laughs> Never thought it was going to be like this. Never thought. Never even dreamed I imagined. Tequila never even thought the level of influence, authority, abundance, greatness, increase. Never even thought. But it all comes from my relationship with Christ. Amen. Staying connected, showing up, being faithful. Thank you, Holy Ghost, 
Ooh, look at me, being faithful. In three men's vineyards, Gary McIntosh, Pastor Humphreys, and Dr. Jeff Wolf, faithful in another man's vineyard. Amen. You finna see. Amen. Faithful. Don't stop being faithful. Because I just read to you that God shows himself faithful. Can't nobody be, I, I, I'm faithful, but I can't be faithful like God in your life. If you want anybody to be faithful, you want God to be faithful. Yeah. If you want anybody to got your back, you want God to have your back. Yeah. I promise you, he ain't going to never talk about you. He ain't going to never lie on you. Yeah. He ain't going to never frown at you. My God, he may spank you. That's Bible, my God, but he ain't going to give up on you. He not going to start out at your feet and end up at your neck. I promise you. If you want anybody on your side, you want God. But you have to create an atmosphere for God to be there. Because if you got a whole lot of mess going on on the inside, the Holy Ghost is not there. And the Holy Spirit is God in spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more point. I'm going to get you out of here. After all that, you got to move. If y'all been looking at the YouTube and taking your notes, you got to move. Number three, you got to, we are moving under the power of the Holy Spirit. We got to move under the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't do nothing without the Spirit, y'all. I promise you, we can't do nothing. We as a body got to move in this season up under the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is directing you, uh, you ain't got time for the pettiness. You ain't got time for the stickiness. I'm just saying, my God, you ain't got time, my God, for all the excuses. I've been teaching my man the last two not, uh, two Mondays. Well, you know, it means me. It's time out for excuses. You ain't got time for excuses. My God, I got less days, Pastor Terry, in front of me than I got behind me. I ain't got time to be making no excuses, That's my right. God. If you're 40 or over, you ain't got time to be making no excuses, man. Yeah. Oh, my God, ain't no more making no excuses. You ain't got time. You ain't got time. You ain't got time. Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't got time. And so, therefore, Jack, if they steady make excuses, it's called clip, clip, clip. I said pe pleasure. If they steady make excuses, it's called clip, clip, clip. Shut up. Mm. Ain't got time. Ain't got time, man. I'm serious. Let me give you this. The ant is motivated by hunger. Let me show you this. The ant is motivated by hunger. That's why Matthew 5 and 6, write that down so you can put everything in context. Matthew 5 and 6. The ants, my God, the, the, the motivation for an ant to be relentless, to be persistent, to be faithful, to come together in the midst of obstacles and trials is because their hunger mm -hmm. drives them. And so I was reading the New Living. My God, I, can I tell y'all this? Just a couple of days ago, the one year reading, I'm enjoying the one year reading. My God, I got so much revelation. I read the Bible. I, I am being, I, literally, y'all, I told my baby, I am tormented. Listen to this, y'all. My God, time. Listen to this, Patrice. I am and have been tormented behind my own hunger. Mm. <laughs> I said, I have been tormented behind my hunger. Because when your hunger get out of balance, it will torment you. Don't never lose the hunger, baby, say. But balance the hunger. Who do you know that's tormented by hungering for the things of God? God gave me that revelation. Keep in mind, I've been walking with it for 23 years, and I just got that. Mm -hmm. Tormented by my own hunger for the things of God, Sister Johnson. You just left church. Eat dinner while you need your Bible. You just left church. You just got out of prayer. Why are you reading the book now? Tormented by my own hunger. Mm -hmm. All that's good. That's good transparency. But you got to be balanced. Yeah. Yeah. You've been in prayer for an hour, and now you got a book. Tormented by my own hunger. <laughs> Don't lose the hunger. Balance the hunger. Ants are motivated behind their hunger. They will not be denied because they're hungry. 
They will not be denied. That's why they are relentless and persistent in the summertime because they only got a short amount of time. Ooh, Lord. Ooh, Jackie, they only got a short amount of time. They got a window of time. And so, therefore, they, that means they ain't got time to make no excuses. They ain't got time to make no excuses because they only got a short amount of time. They only got a short amount of time. Winter is coming. They can't survive in the cold. They go down on the ground deeper. Their colony is on top, but when the winter comes, they go deeper. And oof, thank you, Holy Ghost. When they get cold, they go deeper. They go deeper. Deeper into the earth. Deeper. Deeper. Sometimes you got to go deeper in God. Sometimes to survive, see, My baby told me, she said, you, you do that because, see, the fur, you going back, drives you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Deeper. The fur. Where my son's at? Brandon to go back? Drives me deeper. That's good, but it got to be balanced. The fur. They say, I told you it wasn't going to make The fur losing the ministry. The fur of my baby is not responding. The fear of losing the respect to y'all drives me, Jack. I don't ever want to give him to say, I told you he was. It drives me. My God. Some of y'all need to go deeper. Because you're not out of balance, you just ain't going deeper. You're doing just enough to stay on top, to clear your constant, but you ain't going deeper. Yeah. For some of y'all, my God, to get greatness and increase in abundance, you got to go deeper. Yeah. Let your hunger take you to it, to get, get hungry enough to it, torment you. Oh, my God, will your significant other tell you you're out of balance, my God? Until then, go deeper. I can't yeah. get nobody to say yeah. that right yeah. Somebody give God a head. Oh, my God, I'm finished. I'm finished. Let me get this. Let me get this. Mm. They motivated by hunger. Nothing should ever be able to stop us if we are in God's will and won't nothing ever stop you. The safest place is in his will. Won't nothing ever stop you when you're in God's will. Mm. No critic, no trial, or no obstacle. Please write those down. And I'm getting ready to close with this right here. No critic. Because some of us have stopped because we've been criticized. That's why I was telling you, woman of God, don't let the naysayers. That's talking about y'all ain't going to make it. Y'all just going through the motions or whatever, the, you know, don't let the people tell you that. Don't, don't let, you see what I'm trying to say, woman of God, keep, keep going. Don't worry about the people. Don't worry about the people. Say, you going, I, you know what, I'm glad you're saying that because I'm going through the same thing. 23 years I've been walking with God and people still say I ain't, I ain't real. Yeah. Yeah. 23 years, ain't, ain't no contamination since I've been a Christian and they still think I ain't going off for Christ. Yeah. He playing. Yeah. 23 years. Yeah. 23 years. Then birthed the ministry and it's good on this side. They still say he ain't jealousy. Yeah. That's birthed up under jealousy. Yeah. Because they want to change, but they ain't ready to change. Yeah. Yeah. And so I write this down. And so I can't get offended because some of those same ones criticized are eventually going to make their way to me. Yeah. Especially in this next shift. <laughs> oh, I can't get nobody to yeah. say nothing right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, my God, because people, listen to me, ladies, criticize what they don't understand. So you ain't got time to get bitter at people because they just don't understand. People of the dark don't understand things of the light. The Bible tells you that. So quit getting angry at people who don't know Christ and who don't understand the things of God. Quit cutting people off. They ain't they supposed to know. They can't understand the things of God. It's the book say. Read the book and you'll know how to handle people. So I just keep on walking. No critic, no trial, or no obstacle. So because all of us right now are either dealing with all three of those or we're dealing with one of those. And if you begin to take time and listen to me, y'all, because I know I'm, I'm a little over. If you begin to take time and say, okay, I'm, feeling, I'm dealing with this right now. Is it a trial? Is it an obstacle? Or am I dealing with some, 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 uh, some critic? Some, 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 some form of criticism. Look, you got to evaluate your life. Evaluate. And see, once you understand, okay, I'm dealing with this, and it falls up on the obstacle. What's the obstacle in your life? What is a trial? See, when you're in God's will, as I just told y'all, trials don't come to break you. They come to make Amen. you. Yeah. So some of you are upset and bitter because you're going through trials. And God said, I'm using this as I taught y'all to get you to your spot. Don't get me started. I'm trying to use this trial to get you to your spot. Yeah. 
And so you bitter at the very thing that God is using to get you to your spot so you can get greatness and increase in abundance. <laughs> oh, this is a good message. Believers need to have the same resolve as ants. The same resolve, persistent, determination, hunger. You need that. Some of you right now, under the sound of my voice, that's not hungry. In order for, oh my God, brother boy, just, just follow your pastor. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because I don't ever do nothing to shame or nothing out of your spirit. In order for that to become what it's supposed to become, got to go deeper. Some of y'all, oh my God, for the greatness and the abundance and the increase, you're going to have to go deeper. All of those surface stuff you're doing, that old five-minute devotion, that old two-minute prayer, my God, but you ain't activating nothing, you got to go deeper. If you want to see greatness and you want to see increase, you got to go deeper. If you want to quit get jealous at your sister and brother because they increasing and going, you're going to have to do something. Amen. You're going to have to press. You got depressed. And then the access tip, I think about you right now, you're depressed. Where most people would have tapped out. Yeah, yeah. You defied all odds. Everything, you, everything we would tell you, you say, I ain't, oh, I'm here. I ain't doing, I'm not done. Oh, don't get me going. And still pressing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to be yeah. persistent. Let your hunger torment you to the point where somebody yes. says, girl, boy, slow down. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you ain't hungry enough. That's why ain't nothing changing. You're doing church, but ain't nothing transformation. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You got to be honest with yourself. You got to be hungry. If you want to see abundance, you got to honor God with your giving. Quit dishonoring God with your 10%. You can't give God $99. You're supposed to give him $100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Let me get you. Let me get you. Here we go. Let your hunger, and as far as moving up on the spirit, let it keep you praying, giving, and separate. Praying, giving. Write that down. Praying. Giving. And let, the, and let it keep you separated. Separated. You have to separate yourself. Because you get around the wrong people, listen to me, y'all, they will smother your hunger. Some of it would happen quickly, and sometimes it's methodical. Separation is necessary. Each season requires a different level of separation. Each season requires another level of separation. You have to separate. I want y'all to look at your neighbor and tell your sister, your brother, your son, your daughter, whoever, I need you to survive. Come on, come on, Ronnie. Look at your wife and tell your wife you need her to survive. Melanie says, nobody said, I need you to survive. Felicia, come on, y'all look, y'all look, come on, y'all look at each other. Come on, tell somebody, daughter, I need you. Come on, tell somebody, come on, men of God, because you know what? Because see, let me help you. Don't get me started, because see, if one of y'all got an urge to relapse, one, and one of y'all don't want to relapse, you say, no, 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 you can't do that. I need you to survive. All right, all right. You, you got to go deeper with them, men of God. That, that surface. When one of you got an urge to do something you shouldn't much do, y'all got to hold each other accountable, man. No, man, I, today you're going to be strong, tomorrow he may be weak. Yes. And then tomorrow he may be strong, and tomorrow you may be weak. Yeah. You're talking to a former one, so I know what it's going to take, baby. You need each other to survive, man. This ain't that. You got to go deeper, baby. This you're not going to stay clean and sober. You need each other. I need you. Going on for Christ in this next season, need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. Yeah, yeah, we need you. Come on, let's stand.